Welcome to our lecture online. When I saw this particular question on the JE main test, I was actually quite surprised. I wouldn't expect a question like this on extrinsic semiconductors to be on such a test. This is, after all, a test for high school students trying to get into college. So it all comes down to, have you ever heard of these kind of things before, and do you know anything about them? It just, is the information there or isn't there? So let's read the question and see how to go about it. It says, for extrinsic semiconductors, when doping levels are increased, they give us four statements, and only one of those four statements is correct. So for Fermi level of PNN type semiconductors, or the Fermi level of PNN type semiconductors will not be affected. The Fermi level of P-type semiconductors will go downward, and Fermi level of N-type semiconductors will go upward. On D, it's Fermi level of P-type semiconductors will go upward, and Fermi level of N-type semiconductors will go downward. And here they claim it depends on the temperature, where T sub F is the Fermi temperature. Now, if you've never heard of this before, it's just simply a guessing thing here, you move on. But let's talk about it just a little bit. Now, anything below that was not part of the test. I just put it there so we have something to look at to be able to try to figure out what to do with it. So the idea is this, the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors. Intrinsic semiconductors are pure semiconductors and they have very low conductivity. They're not of much use because they don't conduct electrons very well. So we do want to use extrinsic semiconductors which are doped with impurities. Now, here they're saying is that the doping levels are increased. What is going to be the effect of those increase of doping levels? Well, also what we need to know is what the Fermi level actually is. The Fermi level is the energy level at which electrons reside at 0 K, at 0 degrees Kelvin. And so that Fermi level can either go up or go down. And the question is, will it go up and down or go down with the increase in doping levels? Now, it turns out if we increase the doping levels in a conduction band, we essentially add free electrons. If we increase the doping level in the valence band, we essentially create more holes which are positive for electrons to jump into. So now the equation to be used to calculate how the Fermi level changes for n-type and p-type semiconductors is here. The Fermi level, or the energy level, uh, minus the initial energy level, so the final energy level minus the initial energy level of n-type uh, semiconductors is equal to plus the Boltzmann's constant times the temperature times the natural log of n over n sub i. So if n is bigger than n sub i, in other words, if we increase the doping levels for n-type semiconductors, the difference in the energy levels is a positive quantity. So that means that the, we have two dogs and they're kind of getting out of hand here. They're getting hungry. They want to be fed. <laughs> yeah, they're just playing. All right. So, hey guys, calm it down a little bit. So, here we can see that for n-type semiconductors, the Fermi level goes up relative to the initial level, because the positive sign here, if n is bigger than the initial doping amount. So, we can see that for n-type semiconductors, the Fermi level goes up. But for p-type semiconductors, the Fermi level Okay, guys, you're going to come down so we can finish here? <laughs> All right, let's try this again. <laughs> All right, guys, we're trying to do a video here. All right, let's try to finish this up. Okay, so for p-type semiconductors, the difference in energy levels is actually negative if the doping is increased, if p is great, greater than p initial. So from that, we can see that for n-type, the um, Fermi level goes up, and for p-type, the Fermi level goes down. And which of the four answers tells us that? 
it says for Fermi level of p-type semiconductors will go downward and Fermi level of n-type semiconductors will go upward and therefore based upon these two equations we can see that answer B is the correct one. Now <laughs> I would say that I would expect very many students to have known this and I think this is kind of an unfair question to be put at this level but I guess what they're trying to separate is the students that know more from the students that know less and there's one way to do that is to throw something like extrinsic semiconductors questions in the test but here it is in case you're interested that's how you find the answer